Welcome back to Now Streaming with me, Frank Javier. Thank you for joining me for another episode. Today I'm going to be talking about the movie The Northman, which is out in theaters uh, right now. And basically it's the story of a Viking prince who sets out to get revenge on people that murdered his family. Uh, it stars Alexander Skarsgård, Nicole Kidman, and Anya Taylor-Joy. And it's directed by Robert Eggers, the talented Robert Eggers. Now, for those of you who don't know who Eggers is, he's a really up-and-coming director who uh, really made a niche for himself. I think he's the creator of the elevated horror that Screen 5 kind of pokes fun of in the movie. Um, he did The Witch, which also stars Anya Taylor-Joy, and The Lighthouse. Now, again, his movies are very artsy. Sometimes they're hard to follow or to understand. They can be very uh, slow-paced, but um, they're beautifully shot. They're complex filmmaking, and it's just the kind of movie that critics will enjoy and film buffs will like. Will the mainstream like his films? The last two? You know, so-and-so. But um, this movie, The Northman, it's apparently being called his most mainstream movie, right? So going into this movie and having seen the trailer, not really knowing much about the story, just seeing the trailer, the Viking story, right? It seems like it has a lot of battles, like wars, and it's a period timepiece. Uh, so you can associate it with like Braveheart, 300, and that kind of, of movie, right? But um, when you actually go and see the movie, uh, the question that I uh, would ask you and that I ask myself is, is this really a mainstream movie? Um, and in my opinion, it is, but it's not. It's his most mainstream, but it's still not mainstream enough for mainstream audiences, in my opinion. Now, I say that it is mainstream solely because of the storyline. Like I said, it's a revenge story. Someone, something happens to, to uh, his family in his past, and he accepts that his journey in life will only be to uh, get revenge against those that hurt him and his family. We've seen that many times, right? So many movies are like this. So it's nothing new. So from that point of view, or from, or from that element, sure, the movie is mainstream. Um, however, uh, it has a Shakespearean vibe to it. So while I'm watching the movie and the story is unfolding, I start thinking to myself, gosh, this is kind of Shakespearean. Um, the story, revenge, is sort of like Hamlet. I did not realize that it actually is Hamlet. So after the movie finished, and I was excited to know more about the movie, and I should have done my research before going into the theater, but sometimes I'm scared to do that because I don't want to uh, read too many spoilers. But I mean, in this case, I wish I would have because after the movie finished and I did some research on the movie, turns out that this story of the Northman is a real, actual story uh, from real people. So it's a historical, uh, true life story which Shakespeare based Hamlet on this, this story. It was uh, quite a surprise to me because I never knew that Hamlet was based on something else. Um, and I don't know how I did not put it together because the main character in the movie, his name is Amleth. So Shakespeare only took the H from the end of Amleth to the front to call him Hamlet. So I should have put that together, but I didn't. But I did realize it was very Shakespearean. Um, so it was kind of cool to realize that this is a real historical true story, right? And I wish I would have known that going in because I think I would have appreciated the story more and I would have given more value to, this, to these characters and to what they did knowing that it was true. So the reason why I would say that the movie is not very mainstream is that it still has an artsy feel to it, even though there's a lot of battles and fighting going on. Uh, from the point of view of the direction, the dialogue, and the visuals, 
is it's very artsy, right? It's very filmmaking 101 in terms of what great directors can do. And the visuals are stunning. There's a mesmerizing fight in uh, the end of the movie that takes place in an erupting volcano uh, between Amleth and the person that he's trying to, to get revenge on. Um, and it happens... At nighttime, and you don't really see them. You only see their black silhouettes. They're they're completely nude, but it's tasteful nude. You can't see anything, and you only see the light behind them from the lava, the red and orange lava. It's it's stunning. It's a great battle at the end. And what I like most of the movie, and the reason why I recommend it, is that the film. Um, Eggers did not provide a, a Hollywood romanticized version of Viking times. Right. So when I uh, thought to myself, oh, it's a Viking movie. What do I know about Vikings? You know, I always associate Vikings to a Thor type character, you know, long blonde hair, long blonde beard, muscular, uh, big time warriors, uh, loyal to their women. Women are loyal to their men, musculars. Right. So that was my my vision, uh, my idea of Viking. So when I did some research, you know, yes, they may have that those elements to to viking uh, history but it was a gruesome gruesome time uh very violent so eggers really provides that realistic view into this this movie and like i said it's violent the movie's very bloody so for those of you who do not like violent movies you will feel slightly uncomfortable but i think that the story calls for that because if you want to be real then you need to portray it and that's the reason why I like the movie the most is because he created not just in the actions of the characters and what they do, but in the atmosphere, the entire movie, it's just you can sense the dirtiness of the era. There's mud everywhere. Everybody's dirty. They're, they're, uh, people's hygiene are just gross, uh, wet conditions. Um, it's just, it's a very unpleasant time to live in. And watching the movie, you feel the unpleasantness of the time, which is the brilliance of a good director, in this case, Eggers. So we're very lucky to be living in 2022, despite all the bad things that are happening today. Um, as for the cast, uh, they all really shine in their roles. Uh, Alexander Skarsgård is great as Amleth, like I told you guys. Uh, Amleth is known as the Prince of Denmark. That's what, what the story is based on. And he really transformed from a physical point of view. I mean, I did not realize it was Alexander Skarsgård. I know it was him from because I knew it says so on the trailer and the poster. But I could not recognize him to save my life. With the long hair and the beard and how jacked and chiseled and shredded he was, I, I was like, is, is that really him? Later on, when he cuts his hair, you can tell. But in the beginning, it's like, wow, this guy really transformed for this movie. But he's also good in the emotional parts where he needs to be. You know, he's very believable as a broken man with nothing to lose who is out for revenge. Then as for Nicole Kidman, you know, gut lover. I, I absolutely love Nicole Kidman. Probably one of my and my top three favorite actresses right now. Uh, she never fails to deliver. Everything she does is always uh, something new, something that she's never tried before. It's almost like she, she picks roles that she wants to really challenge herself. She doesn't have a huge role here, but she plays Amleth's mother. And I really liked that her storyline was really the only twist that the movie had. And she is a merciless woman who is out for survival at all costs. And she has one great scene at the end, which makes me think, why hasn't she done more roles like this? Because I really want to see more of her evil dark side. She was great. Uh, then we have Clay's Band. Now, Clay's Band is the villain in the movie. And I had never really heard of this man until I saw him in the Netflix Dracula show. He plays Dracula. And I thought he was great on that show. If you guys have never seen it, give it a, give it a shot. Um, it's a really good take on Bram Stoker's uh, Dracula. And uh, I really like what he did in that show. I thought he was present and he commanded uh, the screen. 
So in this one, in this movie, he's the villain. You know, he's the one that Alexander Skarsgård's character is going to go against. And I'm telling you, that man match Alexander Skarsgård's in intensity of the emotional performance and also in the physicality. Even though Skarsgård looks huge and muscular in this movie, you can tell that Clay's band, he made all the work that he could to uh, match him in those battles. And, and it, it worked because not only did he, did he match him, but the battles were better because both were at the same level. He was great. Then we have Anya Taylor-Joy, and she's good as usual. Unfortunately, in this movie, she doesn't do much. She's a little bit underused. Um, she's more like the love interest. She's supposed to be almost like a, like a witch-type uh, character. Um, and she does her little things here and there, but really the purpose of her in this movie is to be the love interest and have the child of Amleth and carry his legacy. Because that's really what the movie is about. It's about your lineage and how you keep that legacy going. And this man wanted to keep that legacy going. It's what he was taught since he was a kid. And, you know, it worked because, look, it's 2022 and we are still talking uh, about this story. And then for notable mentions, we have Ethan Hawke. Now, he plays uh, Alexander Skarsgård's father, uh, the Viking king, who gets unfortunately murdered in the, in the beginning. And he doesn't have, again, it's a short role, but he does so good in it uh, once again. And when I say once again, I mean it because he's also on Moon Knight um, and he has another movie coming out. I think it's a Bloomhouse movie. I think it's called Black Telephone and it's already getting decent reviews where he plays a little bit of a crazy character. And I am loving these characters that he's doing lately, like the one he's doing in Moon Knight where he's a villain. Not only does he does it well and believable and he shines in the role, but they're so different from what we're used to of him. You know, in the 90s, he was kind of like the, the good looking guy in movies. Uh, everybody wanted him for love stories, especially for, for indie love movies and romance, romantic movies. So it's good to see him that he's at a point in his career where he's doing different things and he's doing them well. So I really liked him. Then we have Bjork. Out of nowhere, Bjork is in this movie. Um, she has, a, again, a small role where she does very, very well. And I don't want to say what her role is, um, but I like that she's in it. But it also reminds me how good of an actress she is. I remember, I think I was in high school when this movie came out. So about 15, 20 years ago, almost. Um, Dancer in the Dark. Uh that movie, it's a very odd movie, and she's a very odd person, so it kind of works for her advantage, but it just reminded me, like, God, like, what, why hasn't she done more movies? Like, she's good here, she was good then, you know, but it just goes to show you how Hollywood is. And then we also have Willem Dafoe. Again, small role, he doesn't do much, he's kind of like a spirit guru of sorts in the movie, but he kind of plays it very, uh, m like, like a crazy maniacal spirit guru guru and uh again he is out there but he took it serious and that's one thing i'll give to the entire cast all of these people their roles were difficult again they're the shooting conditions they're in the cold in the mud for hours a day cannot be easy and you can tell that all of them took it very seriously and they gave their their best foot forward to all other characters Every character is very different from the other, and it serves the purpose to create the entire story. So, in conclusion, The Northman is Edgar's most ambitious film, giving audiences a historically accurate portrayal of the time period, but it's not mainstream enough to capture audiences' interest. Now, I'm not saying the movie is bad. I still want you guys to go see it. But it's not a movie that you're going to be blown away by. Now, I was hoping that this would be his award-worthy movie, but unfortunately, it is not. And with a low box office draw this last weekend, I don't see that happening soon for Eggers. However, I think that this kind of movie that he did, which is more ambitious and the storyline is more of a straight shot compared to his other ones, um, studios might pay attention to him and he might get picked up for a big, big movie that might be the one that I'm waiting for. But to be determined. 
So that's my review of The Northman. Uh, what did you guys think of the movie? Do you agree with me or not? Uh, what did you like and how would you make it better? Uh, so leave your comments below. Uh, and again, subscribe today. And as always, thank you for watching. And I'm Frank Javier and I'm signing off.